All right, guys, this is a video I did not really want to do, but I felt like I kind of had to. There's something going on right now here in Tennessee that is horrendous. And I was out working today and all of a sudden a smell came on the wind. It is one of the most awful smells you ever will smell. Dave from Growing the Home Garden, here is what that smell is. See those white flowers on that tree? That is a Bradford pear tree or calorie pear tree. It's actually probably not the actual Bradford pear tree. It's more of a hybridized offspring that has grown up everywhere here in Tennessee. And it's pretty, you know, you've got some really nice looking flowers here. But the problem is this thing is not native to this region. It's actually from overseas, from China and was developed over here in America and then released because they thought it was sterile. And boy, were they wrong. So why is this such a bad plant to have in the landscape or in the yard or even out here in the woods? I mean, it looks pretty, right? Well, first off, it displaces what should have been here already. There should have been native plants here that would have fed the animals and the wildlife, the pollinators, but this is not from here. So the animals and plants and, and the whole area has not adapted with this. And so it is not a valuable plant in the area for those pollinators. You might have a few that use it. You might have some animals and stuff that eat the berries, mostly starlings and stuff like that. Uh, and they spread it all over the place. If you have one of these in your landscape, you probably will notice that all the spots where the branches come together come into a tight V shape, which makes it a very weak unit. And then there's a whole bunch of branches in one location and all those things make it very difficult for that plant to stay together. So when you have high winds, it will break apart and fall into all kinds of pieces. So think about the extra cost though with these things. When you first buy it, maybe it was 20 or 30 bucks. You know, not bad, it's a tree, just a landscape tree you put in the yard, but you don't think about that. Then years down the road, it happens. The tree branch breaks, you gotta cut it down. You gotta hire somebody to come in and cut out your tree. And then it costs a whole lot more than that. You could be looking at one of the most expensive trees to plant in your landscape in a Bradford pear tree. So one argument I hear in favor of Bradford pear trees, or at least one way to take care of them, is to actually go in and graft fruiting pear trees onto them. The problem with that, there are several of them actually, is there are so many of these trees around that that would be extremely hard to do on a large scale. You might be able to handle a few of them in your own yard or garden, but when they have escaped to nature, they are everywhere. So you really need somebody to go in and clean these things out, clear them out and get, get them gone. The other problem with grafting is just the learning curve. There's a lot of people who would have to learn how to do that. And most home gardeners probably don't do their own grafting. They pretty much buy the plants from the store and they may come grafted from there. But it is something that individual homeowners could learn to do if they chose to, but I don't think on a large scale that most people would do that. And one of the main reasons I, I thought I need to do this video was because I was digging and I could just smell them everywhere. The Bradford pear tree scent is terrible. It smells like rotten fish. And who would really want to plant a tree that smells like rotten fish? It's just not a good choice. So a common alternative that's recommended a lot to that Bradford pear tree over there is the service berry. Now the service berry is an American native tree that produces white flowers that eventually produce an edible fruit. And that's a whole lot better than what this thing does. You get that edible fruit, you can enjoy it, the wildlife can enjoy it, and it's so much better for everybody. Another alternative you could do is Yoshino cherry. Now it's not a native plant, but I just love the way they look every spring when they're all in bloom and they're not invasive. They are pretty well behaved. Uh, so that's one possible alternative. Service berry is another one. Both would be decent choices for your garden. So guys, if you do have one of these trees in your yard, do what you can to eliminate it. They are just not a good tree to have around. They do a lot of harm and they really don't provide you much benefit. You get to look at them for just a brief period of time and that is about their only good quality. They might make some firewood, but there too, that's not good enough to keep it around. So I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.